English Grammar and Composition 9 to 10. Contents Chapter 1 Paragraph Writing 1. My School 2. Girl Guides 3. A Visit to a Museum 4. A Visit to a Hospital 5. Fashions 6. A River in Flood 7. A Dream 8. How to Keep Our Town Clean 9. An Industrial Exhibition 10. My Neighbor 11. A Mina Bazaar 12. A Road Accident 13. Pakistani Women Exercises with Hints 1. A Fortune Teller 2. Bazant 3. A Picnic 4. A Street Quarrel 5. A Visit to an Historical Place 6. A Visit to Daisu 7. Alama Iqbal 8. The Teacher I Like the Best 9. A House on Fire Two-Story Writing Introduction Specimen 1. Kindness of the Holy Prophet, Peace Be Upon Him 2. Robbers Turn Good Citizens 3. The Donkey Trapped in His Own Trick 4. The Foolish Stag 5. A friend in need is a friend indeed. 6. Haste makes waste. 6. A big reward. 8. The tailor and the elephant. 9. The clever cat and the vain fox. X. The Muslim Brotherhood. 11. The boy who cried wolf. 12. The jester and the king. Exercises. Stories and Outlines Three Letters, Applications, and Invitations 1. To your mother who is worried about your health. 2. To your father asking him about the health of your mother. 3. To your sister congratulating her on her success in the examination. 4. To your mother about the test you have just taken. V. To your father requesting him to send you some extra funds for payment of hostel dues. 6. To your brother about the importance of the study of science subjects. 7. To your friend congratulating her on her birthday. 8. To your friend requesting her to spend her spring holidays with you. 9. To your friend congratulating him on the marriage of his sister. 10. To your friend requesting him to lend you some books. 11. To your friend thanking her for her hospitality during your visit to her house. 12. To your friend condoling the death of his mother. 13. To your brother advising him to take steps to improve his health. 14. To your sister thanking her for a gift. 15. To your friend thanking him for the books he lent to you. Invitations. Acceptance and refusal. Applications. For leave. For grant of fee concession or stipend. For character certificate. For a job. Letter to a bookseller to send you some books. For dialogue writing. Examples. Between a teacher and a student. Between two students regarding prayers. Asking one's way. Between a brother and a sister concerning time. Between a tailor and a customer. 5. Comprehension of a passage. Solved examples. Exercises. 6. Essay writing. My last day at school. Sports and games. My house. Courtesy. Libraries. Health. The monsoon or a rainy day. A scene at the railway station. A hockey match. A cricket match. A true Muslim. Life in a big city. Village life. Television. A visit to a hill station. Kate Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah. Boy Scouts. Essays and Outline. 
My favorite book. My ambition. My hobby. Our school canteen. My best friend. Exercise. 7. Translation. Table of question words. Conjugation of verbs. Introductory at, and, there. Use of is, am, are, and, was, were. Use of has, have. Use of had. Present indefinite tense, active voice. Present continuous tense, active voice. Present perfect tense, active voice. Present perfect continuous tense, active voice. Present indefinite tense, passive voice. Present continuous tense, passive voice. Present perfect tense, passive voice. Past indefinite tense, active voice. Past continuous tense, active voice. Past perfect tense, active voice. Past perfect continuous tense, active voice. Past indefinite tense, passive voice. Past continuous tense, passive voice. Past perfect tense, passive voice. Future indefinite tense, active voice. Future continuous tense, active voice. Future perfect tense, active voice. Future perfect continuous tense, active voice. Future indefinite tense, passive voice. Future perfect tense, passive voice. Paragraphs 8 Grammar Parts of speech Pair of words 9 Vocabulary Chapter 2 Story writing Introduction The young or the old, all enjoy hearing and reading stories. Interesting stories Particularly appeal to everyone. Here are some important points which will go along. Way in making a story interesting and impressive. 1. It should have a clear and well-planned plot. 2. The events should follow in natural order. 3. It should be in simple English. 4. Dialogues should be impressive and worded as naturally as possible. 5. It should always be in the past tense. 6. There should be no grammatical mistakes. 7. It should have some suspense for the reader, to make the story have a strong grip. 8. Practice makes a man perfect holds good in the case of story writing too. Developing a story from a given outline is easier than writing one on a heading. Or a moral, whatever the case the conclusion or the end should be handsomely drawn. And moral, if any should follow in a natural and clear way. Specimen Develop the following outline into a readable story. A farmer has three sons, they keep on quarreling, father advises again. And again but to no effect, falls seriously ill, sends for the sons, asks them to bring a handful of sticks, ties them into a bundle, asks them to break it turn by turn, all the three fail, unties the bundle, asks them to break single sticks. They easily break, lesson, united we stand, divided we fall. Complete story. Once a farmer had three grown-up sons. They always quarreled among themselves. Their father advised them to live in peace but it had no effect on them. He was worried about their future. One day the farmer fell seriously ill. He sent for his Sons. He asked them to collect a handful of sticks which they did at once. He tied the sticks into a bundle. Now, he asked them to break the bundle one by one. They tried hard to break it but none could. At last the farmer untied the bundle and asked each of them to break each stick. They did so quite easily. Their father said, My dear sons, you could. Not break the sticks as long as they remained tied together but you broke each single stick quite easily. They were strong in bundle but became weak when separated from one another. Never forget that united we stand and divided we fall. This had a deep effect on the farmer's sons. They gave up quarreling and began to live in peace. Kindness of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. Once the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, went out on a journey along with some of his companions. Birds were singing and chirping joyfully. 
one of the companions of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, saw a nest in a bush. It was the nest of sparrows and there were two sparrow chicks in it. He picked up the young sparrow. All at once the sparrows came crying and began to fly over his head. The Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, asked his companion why the sparrows were circling over his head. He told the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, that he had removed their young ones from their nest. The Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, was greatly moved. He, peace be upon him, felt sorry for the poor little birds and advised his companion to put back the baby sparrow in its nest at once, which he did. The sparrows felt happy and cried no more. The Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, was kind and affectionate not only to human beings but also to all creatures of the universe. For this very reason God Almighty was pleased to bestow upon him the title of, Benefactor of all the worlds. The Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, also said, God will not be kind to him who is not kind to others. Robbers turn good citizens. Has Rat Sheikh Abdul Qadir Gilani, God be pleased with him, had to undertake a journey, when he was yet a young boy, his pious mother stitched up forty gold coins in his shirt. She advised her son to speak the truth always. He joined a caravan and set off on his journey. When the caravan entered a forest a gang of robbers fell on the travelers and deprived them of all their valuables. While they were busy robbing everyone, a robber happened to pass by the young boy. He said, Boy, do you have anything on you? Yes came the prompt. Reply, I'll have forty gold coins. The robber asked the young boy to show the money which he readily did. The robber took the boy to the leader of the gang. Like all other robbers the leader was not a little surprised. He said, Why did you not deny having money? Has Rat Sheikh Abdul Qadir Gilani, God be pleased, with him, told the robber's chief that his mother had advised him to speak the truth. Always. This had a deep effect on the chief. He said, Alas! I do not obey the commands of God while this little boy so faithfully follows the advice of his mother. Remorse became a guideline to show him the right path. He made up his mind. To give up his bad ways of earning livelihood. He disbanded the gang and advised all. The members to live an honest life. Thus the example set by Hazrat Sheikh Abdul. Qadir Gilani, God be pleased with him, reformed all the robbers. He grew up to be a great religious leader and a pious saint. He is held in great esteem by millions of his followers and devotees. He is popularly known as Ohaus El Azam Gilani. The donkey trapped in his own trick. A villager had a donkey. He earned his living by transporting goods from place to place on that donkey. One early morning he loaded the donkey with salt and set off to the town. A stream ran across his way to the market. As the donkey walked through the stream it slipped and fell down. A good deal of salt was washed away and the donkey felt light, the donkey thought it was quite a good trick to make the load light. Next morning the man again loaded it with salt. The donkey played the same trick and got light. The master saw through the game and made up his mind to teach the donkey a good lesson. Now on the third day he put a bale of cotton on the donkey. The silly animal tried the same trick once more. Soaked with water the cotton load became much heavier than when it was dry. Moral, the foolish donkey was punished for his bad intention. A foolish stag. One hot summer day a stag went to a pool to drink water. The pool water was clear. It could see its reflection in the water. It felt proud of its beautiful horns. But, when it saw the shadow of its thin legs it felt sad and hated them. While it was still, thinking of its ugly legs it heard the sound of the horse's hoofs of a huntsman and the barking of hounds. It ran for its life as fast as its legs could carry it. In no time it left. 
the hounds far behind. Now it happened to pass through a thick forest. As it rushed through, its horns got caught in the branches of trees and bushes. It struggled hard to free itself but all in vain. Meanwhile the hunter and his hounds came chasing it. They Hounds fell upon it and killed it. The legs it hated had carried it away from the hounds while the beautiful horns brought about its death. Moral, all that glitters is not gold. A friend in need is a friend indeed. Once upon a time two friends lived in a village. They were very close friends. As time passed their friendship grew thicker and thicker. Now they were grown up. Men, one day they decided to go and find work. They set off. Before leaving their village they promised to stand by each other through thick and thin. They took oath of sincerity and assured each other of help in the hour of need. They had to pass through a jungle. They had not gone far into the thick forest when they found themselves face to face with a big bear. The beast began to move towards them. They felt helpless and terrified. One of them knew how to climb a tree. He at once caught hold of a strong branch and swung up the tree. The other could not climb. He had heard that the bear does not eat the dead. So he lay down on the ground and held his breath pretending to be dead. Meanwhile, the bear came to him and sniffed at him. The beast left him. When the bear had gone out of sight, the friend on the tree came down. He asked his friend. Dear friend, what did the bear whisper in your earl? The other replied quickly, they. Bear advised me not to trust a selfish friend. Saying this he left him and went away. Haste makes waste. A hunter had a beautiful hound who always went hunting with him. The faithful dog was a thick friend of the hunter's only son who loved to play with the dog. The master also loved the hound for its friendship with his young son who was only Ten years old. The master of the house had no one else in the house. One day, the hunter went out hunting but forgot to take the hound with him. His son was still asleep in his bed. As he reached the edge of the forest he found that he had forgotten to bring the hound with him. He decided to go back and bring the hound. He came home but was afraid to see his hound all bloodstained standing at the gate. The hunter thought that the hound had killed his son. He whipped out his sword and killed the dog. He quickly walked into the house and saw blood pools here and there. Just then he saw his son coming out of his room. The boy told his father how a wolf had come into the house and was about to kill him when the hound pounced upon it and tore it into pieces. The hunter began to cry at his haste in killing the faithful creature. A big reward. Once a hungry wolf was devouring his prey. In a bid to finish it quickly, he swallowed a big bite of the flesh but a bone also went in and got stuck in his throat. It hurt him very much. So he decided to go to a crane to help him. He said, well dear friend, I am in great trouble please pick out the bone in my throat. The crane was afraid lest the wolf should bite off his head. But the wolf assured him of safety and a big reward besides, for the service. At last the crane agreed to do the needful. It put its long beak into the throat of the wolf and pulled out the bone. The wolf was very happy now. The crane demanded the promised reward for his service. The wolf, at once, said, isn't it a big reward that I have not bitten off your head when it could not have escaped my teeth? The crane hopped away disappointedly. The tailor and the elephant. A tailor ran a shop in a town. He was a good-natured jolly fellow. A man in the town had a pet elephant. The elephant went drinking at a pool out of the town daily. It passed by the tailor's shop. The tailor gave him a bun every day. In course of time. They became good friends and were well pleased to meet each other, the tailor always waited for the elephant to come to him and the elephant was also there at the usual time. 
One day, the tailor had a dispute with one of his customers. He was feeling unhappy and cross. Meanwhile the elephant arrived and put his trunk into his shop. Through the window to receive the friendly bun as usual. The tailor instead of giving a bun, pricked its trunk with a needle. The elephant felt hurt at this but silently went his way to drink. The elephant quenched his thirst and then filled his trunk with dirty, muddy water. It came back quickly put its trunk in, and emptied it. The whole of the shop looked as if plastered with mud. All the fancy dresses and rich wedding robes were mud-stained and badly spoiled. The tailor was overwhelmed with sorrow but it was too late. Moral, it is well said, look before you leap. The Clever Cat and the Vain Fox One day a cat and a fox happened to meet in a forest. The fox said to the cat, Good morning, where are you off to, let's have a chat. It's all safe here. The cat stopped and greeted the fox and said, Mr. Fox, I'll think it is not safe to stop here for long. I'll usually see hunters about here. Oh, never mind the hunters I'll know scores of tricks to dodge the hunters. Do you also know any such trick? The cat said, I'll only know how to climb a tree in time of danger. The fox was vain and looked at the cat with contempt. He said, ah, poor soul, is that all? How can you escape death if your single trick fails? Shall I'll teach you some sure tricks? Just then the cat saw a huntsman approaching with a pack of hounds. It said, look, there come the hounds. Goodbye. It climbed up the nearest tree and cleverly saved her life. The hounds came upon the vain fox very soon. The fox ran for his life. But the hounds overtook him before long and tore him to pieces. Moral, once a liar, always a liar. The Muslim Brotherhood. The Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, united the Muslims into a wonderful brotherhood. They were sincerely devoted to one another and made every sacrifice for other Muslims whoever and wherever they might be. They laid down their lives for their Muslim brethren. Abu Jahan bin Husfa tells us a wonderful story. It is really a true story which shows their great love and their sense of sacrifice for one another. It relates to the Battle of Yarmouk. He says, El set out in search of my cousin who was fighting on the battlefront. El carried a water skin to offer water to the thirsty soldiers.